Hello everyone, it's Daniel from TechMind Factory. Welcome to this third episode from the series called Modern Identity Powered by Azure. In this episode, I would like to talk about some best practices and recommendations when it comes to integration with Microsoft Identity Platform. I hope you will find this video interesting and helpful. In this video, I prepared 10 recommendations, but of course, there are more. So let's start with the first one. Do not store any secrets in public client applications. If you watched my previous video from this series, right now you know that public client applications are the applications that run on devices or desktop computers or in a web browser. They are not trusted to safely keep application secrets, so they only access web APIs on behalf of the user. Public clients cannot hold client secrets and any secrets. So public client applications should never contain any secrets. The second recommendation is to avoid using ID tokens for backend authorization. ID tokens should be used for users authentication. Access tokens should be used for authorization to access web APIs. Web APIs never use ID tokens for authorization. Web APIs never accept access tokens issued for other web APIs. Applications in which users successfully authenticated should not investigate access token content. Third recommendation, web APIs should validate access tokens for signing to check whether the token was signed properly by the right identity provider. Issuer, to confirm the name of the identity provider which issued the token. Audience, to confirm that API is the right receiver of the token sent from the calling application. And expiration to make sure that the expired token is not used to access resources. Web API should operate based on the claims in the access token. If delegated permission was granted, the access token will contain user identity, the scopes for which the app has been authorized, and the user roles if defined by the API and assigned by the administrator. Next recommendation use one app registration client ID for one application type. Each application should have its own application registration in the Azure AD and Azure AD B2C Siam. This helps managing granular authorization and differentiate authentication actions in the logs. It's easier to manage permissions and roles. Next one use granular authorization and scopes. Applications and web APIs should use granular authorization. Applications should be granted permissions with least privilege rule to make sure they can access resources in limited scope. Here are a simple API endpoints. The first one is to list all the items from the database and the second one is to get one specific item by its ID. Now, to access those specific endpoints, we have to use access token. But this is not the end, because we have to also specify delegated permissions, like catalog view all to list all the items, but also catalog view published to list only published items, for instance. Basing on that, we have to decide who can access what. So, in this case, we have two types of users, admin, which can view all the items, and user, which can only see published items. Now, when it comes to defining the scope, there is a good pattern to do it, recommended by Microsoft. It's resource.operation.constraint, like catalog.view.all. So in this case, we can be sure that following this pattern, we can implement granular authorization to access our web APIs. 
Authorization is also connected to roles in the Azure AD and this is something what we are going to discuss in one of the videos in this series. Next recommendation, use the Microsoft authentication libraries. Do not implement directly against protocols such as OAuth or OpenID if you do not have strict requirements. Leverage the official libraries supported by Microsoft. Microsoft Identity Web and Microsoft Identity Client. Microsoft Identity Web is a library which contains a set of reusable classes used in conjunction with ASP.NET Core for integrating with Microsoft Identity Platform. It simplifies adding authentication and authorization support to web applications and web APIs integrating with Microsoft Identity Platform. On the other side, there is Microsoft Identity Client Library, which enables developers to acquire tokens from the Microsoft Identity Platform, so from the Azure AD and Azure AD B2C Siam, in order to authenticate users and access secure web APIs. Microsoft Identity Client supports many different application architectures and platforms, including .NET, JavaScript, Java, Python, Android, and iOS. Those libraries are recommended when using Azure Active Directory and Azure Active Directory B2C Siam for identity and access management. Next recommendation, use OAuth authorization code flow with Pixie. OAuth authorization code flow with proof key for code exchange or Pixie is recommended for most of the application types. Authorization call flow with Pixie is required when using single page applications with Microsoft Identity Platform. In the OAuth 2.1 specification, Pixie is required for all OAuth clients using the authorization call flow. So now let's explain the whole flow so you understand how it works. Let's start with the basics. So in a standard OAuth 2 authorization code flow without Pixie, there is this flow where user is redirected to the authorization endpoint of identity provider, user provides credentials, user is successfully authenticated and redirected back to the application together with the code provided by identity provider. And now application is responsible for calling the token endpoint of identity provider with this code to exchange the code for a set of tokens like ID tokens, access tokens, refresh tokens. But in this case, to strengthen the security of this flow, proof key for code exchange was added to authorization code flow. So let's discuss what has changed or what has been added to this flow. So before user is redirected to authorization endpoint before application redirects to identity provider authorization endpoint, there is a random string value generated. So if you use Microsoft authentication libraries, you can be sure that this random string will be generated by the library. So you do not have to worry about it. This random string value is called code verifier. Now from this code verifier, there is a hash created using secure hash algorithm and it's called code challenge. So now when user is redirected to the identity provider, those two values are added to the request. The code challenge, so the hash and also code challenge method. So the information about hashing algorithm for the identity provider. So when user is redirected, User successfully authenticates, provides username, password, and then user is redirected to the application together with the code. And this code has to be exchanged for a set of tokens. So this is like a standard authorization code flow. When the code is returned and then we have to call identity provider token endpoint to exchange the code for the set of tokens. But now with the Pixie, there is, there is something more added to the flow. So let's explain it. When application calls the token endpoint of the identity provider in this post request, 
application adds authorization code and the code verifier. So the original value generated by the application, this random string value. So now in this HTTP post request to the token endpoint, application adds the authorization code that was returned from the authorization endpoint together with the code verifier. So this random string value. And now identity provider creates hash using this code verifier, using this hashing algorithm that was defined and compares those two hashes. If they match, it means that this request was not tampered. So in this case, identity provider exchanged the code for the set of tokens. So now user, so, so now the application receives the set of tokens like access token, refresh token and ID token. So the authorization call flow with Pixie is to strengthen the security of the whole flow of the code exchange. Okay, great. So now it's time to talk about next recommendation, extend token lifetimes. With longer lifetime configuration, you allow users that are already signed in to continue using the application without any perceived disruption until the user signs out from the application or the sessions times out due to inactivity. There is a better user experience also connected with longer token lifetimes because users can continue using the application without the need to constantly re-authenticate. You should avoid using OAuth2 implicit grant flow. OAuth2 implicit grant flow to obtain access tokens directly from the authorization endpoint should not be used. But there is a difference and this is something what I told in my previous video from this series. You can use implicit flow with the form post for login only use cases. In this case, it's still secure and valid way to obtain ID tokens. So if you use implicit flow with form post to obtain ID tokens for the application to confirm user identity, it's still fine to do it. When you need to request access tokens when logging in the user so you can call your API, use the authorization code flow with Pixie, which we explained on the previous slide. You can add login to your single page applications and web applications using the implicit flow with form post. So again, implicit flow with form post is fine when you want to authenticate users and you don't want to obtain any access tokens from the authorization endpoint. The last recommendation, configure single sign-on when possible. With single sign-on or SSO, users sign in once with a single account and get access to multiple applications without the need to re-authenticate. Again, there is a better user experience. Great, these were the 10 integration recommendations I prepared for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.